prosper. Shall we just start by having a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. For the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Thank you, Father God, because, Lord, we have come to learn at your feet this morning concerning the things that pertain to our healing and our health. Thank you, Father, because you will teach us Thank you, Father, because, Lord, we will understand your divine love for us that it is not your will that any man should walk in sickness and death. And, Father God, as we learn, we will be established in this truth. And, Lord, every sickness will be driven away from us. We will walk in your divine plan for our lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I hide myself behind the cross. And I say, none of me but all of you. I ask that you make my tongue like that of a ready writer. That I will speak as you have instructed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, while I was, you know, preparing and waiting on the Lord concerning uh, this meeting. I was asking God, I said, God, what do you want me to share about? And I heard in my heart, God is no respecter of sickness. You know, we are used to the, the, the scripture that says, God is not a respecter of persons. But God is not a respecter of sickness either. There's no sickness or disease that is bigger than God. Hallelujah. 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 And we need to understand the God that we're dealing with. Because sometimes it, when we hear some particular diseases, automatically in our mind we give up. Am I correct? I remember um, my cousin, he passed on this year. He had been ill. I, I, didn't know, I actually didn't know the effect, the, the kind of sickness he had. Because we had not been in touch. We had, we had not been in touch a while physically. But a, a relative of mine you know, reached out to me and said, do you know that such a person is very sick? And I said, but we are very close. Why, is, why hasn't he told me yet? I said, maybe it's not something that is serious. Because if it is serious, he will get in touch with me. But eventually, I think she now went back to him and said, Shadi said he never got back to her. So he now, you know, he reached out to me. And um, by the time he sent me the result of his test, when I saw it, I gave up. Why? Because the test showed that he had cancer. He didn't work be a sinner, so we be only I saw Jerry. And it had spread. Oh, city wa, oh, city phone call it, but but no re. At that time, I didn't know his level of faith. Me a koko na me ma bi ikbele ikbado, ti ikbele ikbado re wa. And I didn't know whether he would be able to fight this. Disease. So the only thing I knew that I could do 
was that I wanted to know if he had made his peace with his God. So I called him. And I said to him, I said, have you made peace with God? He said, ah, why are you saying that? <laughs> you know, and all of that. I'm, I will fight this. I will beat it. Ah, only run you know? you. I you I'm me. younger than you. Do you. Are you praying that you know, you, I should die before che, you? You know, and all of that. I said, well, it's not my desire that I should die before me because why I'm older than you. Why you? But I just want to know whether you have made peace with God. Now, that is the way we human beings behave when we see some sicknesses. We give respect to some sicknesses because of the kind of, you know, because of the record that they have. We know that it is some, there are some sickness that when they say you have it, you just say, whoa. Just be thank, just give your, just make with peace with God and be moving on. Whatever happens. You know, if you hear HIV AIDS, HIV. If you hear something like hepatitis B, if you hear something like cancer, we we tend to give up. Because those sicknesses and diseases have a record of fatalities. But not with God. God does not respect any disease. He is not afraid of any sickness because his power is above all and we have seen people who have testimonies who have been healed of those sicknesses and diseases that people that has killed a lot of other people am i correct and so when we look at the scriptures in Acts 10, 38, Can you read it for me? I'll, I'll, I'll read the English. Hallelujah. 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 Bible says that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Bible talks about Jesus healing all. They never brought any disease to Jesus and they said, ah, this one is more than me. God said he has anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Now that and that o, is there on is what the Greek, the, the meaning, the the meaning in, in Greek is kai. And that kai does, means that is. So we can read it and say how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit that is with power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. There is no difference between the Holy Spirit and the power of God. In fact, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the powerhouse of the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what does power do? Number one. It changes the state of things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power 
changes the state of things. You know, we talk about, for example, if you, if you put heat power under ordinary water, after a while, the water will boil. It will change from cold water to hot water. When the power of God is deployed in a particular direction, it changes the things. It can change the state of things. For example, when the children of Israel were going were coming out of Egypt and they were going into the promised land. They got to a point where they couldn't go any further. And that place is where we call the Red Sea. They couldn't go forward. And they couldn't go backwards. Because the chariots of Egypt were, run, were, you know, were running after them. And so they cried out to, to Moses. And Moses cried out to God. And God said to him, What is in your hand? Use it. And he put the rod and stretched it over the water. And the Bible said that the water split into two. And that and each body of water stood like a wall. That is the power of God at work. That God turned flowing water. And it turned into two different walls. Not only that, He also made the ground, the sand, and He made it to be dry. Talk about raw power. Try and imagine it. Go to the beach. You know when you get to the beach. And the waves are coming and going. When the wave goes away, goes back. You and I know that the sand that is left will be very, very wet. If you are not careful, it will hold on to your legs. Now, imagine how the children of Israel passed across the Red Sea with their chariots, with their, you know, with all of their luggage and their horses and their, and their, and everything and the Bible said they went, they went on dry land. That is the power of God. Now, not only did God freeze the water, he also dried that sand. And that power is still available for you and I. God doesn't have different kinds of power. He doesn't have power to you know, dry the sea. And then power to give you food. And then another power to give you a husband. And then another power to make sure that he's protecting you. And another power to heal you. The power of God is the same. So that same power that that dry the sea is that same power that works in us to cause a healing and a cure. Hallelujah. 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 What else does the power of God do? The Bible, it says that the power of God tears down and it destroys. Whatever is not of God, 
when you deploy the power of God at it, it will tear it down, it will destroy it. I remember the story of Jericho. Jericho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The walls were fortified. The walls were strong. In fact, it was told that chariots can, chariots of horses can stand side by side. About five or ten can stand side by side, and they will not, they will still be able to run. On a wall. But when the power of God was deployed at that she same wall, the Bible says that the wall fell down. The wall fell down. The power of God was deployed at, and it destroyed the wall. I need you to, I need you to understand and, and, and imagine with me what this means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can imagine a wall, maybe it is the is about the width of this auditorium. It is as thick as this. Okay. I want you to imagine it. Okay. The Bible says that that wall fell down. Now, if a wall of this size falls down, somebody like me is not likely to be able to climb it over. Am I correct? Okay. Because it is a big wall. But the Bible says that the children of Israel walk straight ahead. What that means is that not only did God pull the wall down, he now sank it into the ground. So that the children of Israel can walk straight. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. What I'm trying to do this morning is I'm trying to lay foundation, precept by precept. So that you will come to a point in your life where you will not respect any sickness. Just like your father does not have any respect for any sickness. Because the power of God is above all. Hallelujah. 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 The third thing that the power of God can do is that it can build. It can build. It can build. It can build. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the man that was he was lame at his feet. Never walked since childhood. Never walked. Never And then he met, you know, Peter and John. On the way to the temple. Now, if you remember someone who has never walked. If you look at someone who has never walked, that means that the muscles of their feet or their of their legs is not developed. Am I correct? It's like thinking about a child or someone that has polio. You can imagine how thin the legs will be. The Bible said this man had never walked from his childhood. And then Peter looked at him and he said to him, 
Silver and gold I do not have. But such that I have. The power of God that I have. The power of God has reached that is within me. I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up. And walk. And the, the Bible said that this man rose. And he walked. Legs that have never been used before. The power of God built up his muscles. It built up his muscles. He built up his muscles. And he gave strength to his legs. God is no respecter of any disease. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Acts 10, 38, which is our theme scripture, the Bible says that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. With talked about the power of God. We are now talking about the fact that Jesus was going about doing good. Good. Why was he going about doing good? Because he is a good God. You know, in Mark chapter 10, verse 18, Mark chapter 10, verse 18, so Jesus said to them, some people were asking him, let's start from 17, there was a man that came to Jesus and he said to him now as he was going out on the road he came, one came out running and knelt before him and said and asked him good teacher what shall I do that I may be inherit eternal life so Jesus said to him why do you call me good no one is good but one that is God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus went about doing good because he is God. And God is good. There is no wickedness in God. If you can see God like a man, if you press him on the side, only good will come out. You know there are some people that will tell you, hey, I have my good side. I have my bad side. Have you not met people that when they treat what the way they treat you is different from the way they treat their family? They call them Adaranile or something else. They, they, you know they call some people like that. They'll say they are good outside, but they're not good inside. Or the other way around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some people that they are like that. I won't come out. They have two sides. <laughs> to some people, when you talk to when you talk about them to some people, they will say, Ah, no, it's not like that. This person is a very, very nice person. But to the person that they have done evil to, <laughs> the person will say this person is a very bad person. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I remember there was a particular person. You know, it was at work many, many years ago. I can't even remember which of the companies then. The, the man was horrible to his staff. They did not like him. They never liked him from one day to the other. But people said 
said that the man was very good to his family. Very good to his family. Now, that kind of person, if you tell his wife and children that this man is a very bad man, they will not believe you. Is that not so? They will not believe you. Because he has his good side and he has his bad side. But not with our God. Our God is good and is good entirely. The one who is who, who, who is merciful even to the one that is a sinner. The Bible talks about the fact that the reign of God falls both on the godly and on the ungodly. So why did Jesus go about doing good? He, did, he was going about doing good because he loves us. He loved mankind. He created us. And he wants the best for us. He wants the best for us. And that was why in John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That was why Jesus was going about doing it. He loves the world. And you know, the only proof of love is an action. Am I correct? If I tell you I love you, Ah, I love you. I love you. And you are hungry. And I have food. And I'm telling you, I love you. And you are naked. And I'm telling you, ah, I love you. And I have plenty clothes in the house. You know. And I know. And I have plenty clothes. But I say, ah, I really love you. I love you a lot. Will you believe me? Will you believe me? believe me. The proof of your love is an action. That is how people will know that you love them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For example, I mean, when I always, I'm always, um, you know, curious when I, when I see young couples, maybe on their wedding day, and when they will ask the, the wife, so why did you marry your husband? Ah, he's a loving man. Then she will not begin to describe that love. He's now here. He's very kind. He's generous. He takes care of me. He is always there. He is always supporting me. That is the love. Have you ever seen somebody say, ah, they say, ah, do you love your wife? Say, ah, I love her. Say, what, how do you show it? Why do I have to show it? People will not believe that you love the person. So the proof that God loves us was why he sent Jesus to die for us. And to also heal all our diseases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is an oppression. If we look at that, I will go back to that Acts 10.38 again. Because I want us to, use, to take up 
all the key words there. First of all, we have looked at the power of God. Because the Bible says that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost that is the power of God. Who went about doing good. And we said that the reason why he is doing good because he is a good God. And because he has our interest at heart. And so that is why he went about healing us. The Bible now says at the end of 10 Acts 10, 10, he says that healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So God made it clear. The Bible made it clear who is the one oppressing. It is the devil. The devil is the one that is the oppressor. He is the one who treats people in an unfair and cruel manner. And he prevents them from having opportunities and freedom. That is oppression. That is an oppression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you thought about it before? That you will see a baby. A baby. Will have sick diseases that even adults cannot carry. Only a wicked being can do such a thing. That is why the Bible made it clear. In Acts 38, who is the oppressor? It is the devil. The devil is behind the sickness and disease. He is the oppressor. He is the one that does not want us to walk in freedom. He doesn't want us to have opportunities. Because when you are down on your sick bed, you cannot avail yourself of any opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No no matter how brilliant you are, no matter how crafted you are, no matter how skilled you are, if that person is on a sick bed, there is no opportunity they can avail themselves of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They cannot make use of any opportunity. The devil is the oppressor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And with respect to healing, because there are different kinds of oppression, where we'll be looking at two types of oppression. Number one, mental and emotional oppression. Let's go to Luke chapter 8 and verse 26 to 32. Talking about the madman of Gadara. When you get there, please read for me. Oh, I'm there before you. Okay, so let me read. Then they sailed into the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from that city who had demons for a long time. I want you to follow me. Bofeki, if you're going to leave me, what's it going to be? I want to gather that. You could you see Galilee? Remember, it was so cool. I'm going to come back there. Near you, Luna. You're the only one who made you feel bad. Because Tiki was so bad. Niki, Joko, Ni, Leka. You can imagine this young man that when his parents gave birth to him, everybody celebrated with him. Everybody was looking forward to this 
baby becoming a man you know becoming a responsible husband father you know becoming a skilled person in whatever profession he wants to do gbogbo eyan foju sona pe omo yi o ko yo se rere laye o yo je baba dada yo je okunrin dada o ise to ba se yo da yo se rere o and then the Bible said that he was oppressed of demons for a long time. He was not even living at home anymore. He was no longer wearing clothes. He was in the tomb where people are buried. He was in the tomb where people are buried. How wicked the devil can be. He took his destiny and put it among the dead. As far as his people are concerned, his friends are concerned his family are concerned even the government is concerned he is as good as dead that is what the devil does let's continue let us continue Owo le ni waju re o wi ninu rara pe kini se temi ti re Jesu iwo mo Olorun oga ogo emi bi o ma se da mi loro nitori ti o wi fun emi aimo na pe ki o jade ku lara okunrin na nigba ku gba ni ni sha ma mu a si fi ewon ati seke seke de a si fi ewon ati seke seke de o si da gbogbo o si o si da gbogbo ide na Let's stop there. I want us to take a look at this. Now, when those demons saw Jesus, look at what they said. He says, what have we, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For he had often seized him. And he was and went and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the dev, demon into the wilderness. Can you see how selfish the devil is? He has destroyed this boy's life to a point where even his family had given up on him. Now, when he saw a deliverer for the boy, he said, what do I have to do with you? Don't chase me out. Just leave me just let me be. Let me be oppressing this boy as I like. Let me do whatever I want to do. Let, let me tear him apart. Let me throw him into the wilderness. Let me cause him to go naked. Let me cause his destiny to be completely, you know, null and void. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the love of God. Because he did not give in to the request of the devil. So he asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion. Because we are many. And they begged him. <laughs> They were begging him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of many swines was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them and he permitted them. Once he 
I want you to see the love of this your father. The Bible said demons begged Jesus. Demons begged him. Demons begged Jesus. And he gave heed to their plea. How much more you? You. In his nature. And likeness, you who he purchased was the precious blood of the Lamb. You who he made the ultimate sacrifice that his only begotten son would come and demean himself and become like a man and go through all the pains. Men will spit on him. And when you see to talk to him, men will beat him. And when you see no, and men will mock him. And when you see. And he will still go to that cross. To die for you. How much more us? God will respect your request. God will honor your appeal. God will answer you when Alone you ask. You if he can answer the demon, if he can grant the request of a demon, he will answer you. He will give respect to your request. So the devil was tormenting this man oppressing him, turned him into a, an animal, destroyed his destiny. That is the oppressor. I'm trying to show you the difference so that we can know who the oppressor is. Because you hear some people, they will say, it is God that brought it. God told us in Acts 10.38, He told us who Jesus is. He told us what he was endowed with. And he told us why he was endowed. And what he's supposed to do with the endowment. So he told us how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost that is the power of God who went about doing good. And what is that good that he was doing? He was healing those that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. The second type of oppression that the devil does with respect to healing and health because we are in healing school. So we will limit the oppression to, heal, to healing and health. There are other types of oppression. There are other types of oppression. But we are just going to limit it to you know, healing school. The second one is physical oppression. We've talked about mental. The people are, they are healthy. They are, they are, you know, when you look at their body, all their body vitals is okay. It's just that their mind is gone. Now, the other kind of oppression that the devil does with respect to our healing and our health is physical oppression. If we take a look at Luke chapter 13 and verse 6, Or is it 16 now? Talking about the woman that was um, the twisted woman. 16. Can someone help me get that? 16. Yeah, 
from the that he talked about um, the woman that, that Jesus said, yes, have you gotten it? Where is it? 13, 13, 13. Okay, where is it? 13, uh, 14. Okay, 13 and 14, okay. Mm. Can you read it for me, please? Olori, sinna gogu si konfon yoro no, ni tori ti jesu mo ni la rada, ni ojo isi mi. O si wifun yoro ni yon. Can we back to 10? O si inko ni no, sinna gogu kon ni ojo isi mi. Right. Si ki esi, o bini kon wa ni be, ti o ni emi a ilera, Hold up there. Here's another one. The woman had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Eighteen years. Eighteen years. So if Jesus had not met this woman, maybe that is the way she would have ended her life. The devil is a wicked devil. If you oppress somebody for 18 years, are you not supposed to stop? You punish somebody for 18 years. Yet you have no regrets. You're not even thinking about releasing that person. Continue. 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 Okay, let's stop there. That's where we need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says she was bent. I want to I want to show you how it was. She was like this. So this but was really how she was. But, but really for 18 years. For 18 years. Ha. That is why anywhere Jesus sees oppression of the devil, he always confronts it. And he always delivers them. Because he's a loving father. Jesus had to ask them when the synagogue, they were, they, they were looking at, they were looking at Sabbath day. Jesus had to say, ah, ah, should this daughter of Abraham not be free? And he also told us who is bounding the person. In verse, is it 15? Yes. In verse 15. Can you read 15 for me? Niba no ni oluwa dan wo si wi fun pe eyin agaba gebe. Olukuluku yin ki tu ma lu tabi keteketere re kuro ni buso. Ki si fa lo mu lo mu mi ni ojo isin mi. Ko ye ki a tu obinrin yi ti ti nse omo omo obinrin omo obinrin Abraham sile ni ide yi ni ni ojo isin mi eni ti satan ti de whom satan has bound Remember in Acts 10:38 Jesus the Bible tells us that how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost that is with power who went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed by the devil So Jesus was telling us here himself Jesus because in the book of Acts, you know, it was a recorded statement about him. But Jesus was telling us here himself, making it clear who is the oppressor. He said, This daughter of Abraham, so you want her to be like this again for another 24 hours. Eburu? Eburu? 
are wicked. You are wicked. You are thinking about Sabbath day. But we don't know just in Milan row. But you are not thinking about this person who has been in this state for so long. And the same thing God is saying to you. That I don't care how long the devil has oppressed you. Today is your day of redemption. You don't have to take it another 24 hours. He doesn't want you to carry it for another one hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to even keep it for another one minute. He loves you. That is why he keeps going up and about doing good. And he's still up and about doing good through the extension of his children and through his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us clearly in John chapter 10 verse 10 Jesus identified who he was or who he is and who the devil is. Can we read John chapter 10 verse 10? Yes. Yes. John chapter 10 verse 10. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Just the same way he destroyed the future of that boy in the, the gathering boy or the man at the gadara. To kill. Did we not see the little boy, the, 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 the boy um, whose mother had only him? I mean, only one child. Only one. And the devil went for that child. The devil is a wicked being. At least you will look at the one that have three, four, five. If you kill one, even if it is painful for them, they will have other that they can be looking at. But only one. She went to bear your con. In your rubble, I say, Oh, you quiet, pa. Oh, you quiet, real. Yet you wait for that child. She don't see bear. What's it to call your mono? To steal joys. Latterly, G. But Jesus had one answer to him. Only one answer. He said, I've come to give life. And abundantly. So all the three things that the devil was doing. One answer. Life. When life comes into a dead being. It will come alive. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. When the life came to the tomb of uh, what's this man now? Na Lazarus. When life came to the tomb of Lazarus, death, death gave way. When life came to the tomb of Lazarus, death had to give up. When life came to the Gadarin boy, or the man at the Gadara, destruction had to hands up. Jesus stopped 
the destruction of that boy's life. Jesus draw a parun ara ayara kun na odaduro. So Jesus said, I don't care what the devil has come to do, whether Je- he has come to steal. Jesus ni ko kan mi o ti satan satan ni fe se boyo fe wa Whether he has come to kill. Boyo fe wa pa ni o. Or whether he has come to destroy. Boyo fe wa pa run ni o. I have only one answer. E down kan shosho ni mo ni life. Iye. When life comes into a sick body. Iye ba fi le kolu agu ara ti aisan wa nbe. That sickness will give way. I saw no your fairy gain, your yagolo. No, I don't care how long that sickness has been. Me, fair more, you are doing tea. I saw not you are. God has made us to respect to realize that He doesn't respect the length of the second year. He doesn't respect it. He has no regard for the length of time the sickness has been there. Whether it has been there for 10 years, 20 years, 38 years. You know, when God is when God made those people to write the number of years in the Bible, it is not because there was not a reason. It is for a reason so that we can realize that our God is a powerful God. And that there is no case that is too strong. No case that is too old. No case that is too far gone for him. So he told us about the man who he, who was lame at his feet for 30 38 years. Ah. The devil is a bad devil. 38 years. Another one, 18 years. Another one, she had spent all she had. She was bleeding for 12 years. 12 years. I don't care how long your own is. Whether it's 12 years or 12 days, 38 years or 38 days or 38 months, that same Jesus is still the healer. And the Bible gives us the, you know, the comfort that he heal all. So your case is not an exemption. See, God specifically put some words in the Bible so that we can situate ourselves in it. He said he healed them all. He healed them all. All of them. Nobody excluding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the kind of sickness. The, the power of God is what we call He will heal the blind. He will heal the deaf. He will heal the lame. He will heal the broken. He will heal the bent. He will heal the twisted. He will heal the mentally incapacitated. Then he will not do the old baba of it. He will raise the dead. The power of God. You know, I, I love to do research. And I was I was checking the Bible to find out where the instances where God said, heal them all, heal them all. Heal them all. I may not be correct. But at least I found 21 times. At least, at least, at least 21 times where the Bible says Jesus healed them all. 
at least 21 times. 21 times. I will not bore you, but you can check it in your spare time. In Matthew 8.16, you will find it there. Matthew 14.14, 14, you will find it there. Matthew 19.2, you will find it there. Matthew 12.15, you will find it there. Mark 6.56, you will find Find it there. Mark 3:10, you will find it there. Luke 4:40, you will find it Luke there. Luke 6:19, you will find it there. Luke 5:17, you will Luke find it there. there. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1, Luke you will find it there. In Luke chapter 9, verse 11, Luke, you will find it there. At least, that is, I've given you at least 12. You can, you can, you can go and do your re own research. Where the Bible says, Jesus healed them all. 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 Whether it is a mild one, whether it's a moderate one, whether it's a chronic one, it doesn't matter. God does not respect any disease. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God does not respect any sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about, you know, Jesus, he said he, he went to Nazareth and he couldn't do so much there, but he said he still healed those that have headaches. And the reason why he couldn't do, he couldn't do much was because of their unbelief. But he still healed the people that had headaches. You would have thought, ah, he's up with saying, headache is not important. I want to to but he healed headache. So it doesn't matter the kind of sickness. Jesus, Jesus healed them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you may be here Holy or you may be watching us online and you are saying, I'm standing, I want to stand on, on behalf of someone. This is healing school. I don't know how whether that one can happen. It's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the same. The Bible calls him Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can see instances where people stood in the gap for other people. In Matthew 8, the centurion stood in the gap on behalf of his servant. He loved his servant. And he stood in the gap. In Matthew 15, the Syrophoenician woman. She came on behalf of her daughter. Oh, no. wow. you fun, oh, Who right. was demon oppressed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 5. Mark we saw Jairus. He came on behalf of his 12-year-old oh, daughter. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we also saw the man who came in on behalf of his demon-possessed son. In Mark chapter 9. So you can stand on behalf of somebody. Jesus is still the same. If he did it in the Bible times, he will do it. It again. Hallelujah. 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 All he is asking from you. Let's go to Mark chapter 9, verse 23. What is he asking from us? What is he asking for us? We have come to understand that God is no respecter of any disease. He doesn't regard them. As far as he's concerned, they are nothing compared to his power. So in verse 9, Mark 9, 23, what does God want us to do? And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. In Mark 
9:23. Sorry, I opened the look. Jesus if you pe bi gbo ba le gbagbo, o n gbogbo ni sise fun eni ti o ba gbagbo. If you can believe him, bo ba le gbagbo. If you can just believe him. Bo ba sha le ibianju ati gbagbo. Look to him and say Lord I believe you. Wo so po Oluwa mo gba o gbo. I don't care how long this is. Mi ni mi bo boya do to pe to to understand that you don't respect any sickness. Oh ye ti je mi bayi pe iwo ki bo ola fun isan. You don't respect any disease. Oh ibo ola fun arun kankan. You are the one that is good. Iwo ni Olorun to da. And you are going about looking for whom you will help. Oh sin kiri sore ohun wa awon to ran lowo. Because God has anointed you with the Holy Spirit and with power. Ori Olorun ti fi emi ma ati agbara ko ti. And I know I now understand oh, yet that it is the devil that is oppressing me. And it is not your desire for me to be oppressed. You want me to live a good life. You want me to live a healthy life. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. You said all things are possible to me. If I can believe, I believe you. I believe you. Jesus, I believe you. Yes, I believe in your name. Bad, but in I believe that your name is bigger than bad, any bad, other sickness. I believe that your bad, name has life. Bad, 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 you have come to give me life. Bad, 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 and to give me abundantly. Bad, 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 that is your desire for me. Sickness is not your desire for me. Sickness is not your desire for me. I, 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 I want, want you to rise up on your feet. I begin to declare it. Oh, Father God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I know that your thoughts towards me are good thoughts. Everything about you towards me is good. You are a good father who thinks good thoughts and does good things for his children. You are a good father. You think good thoughts and you do good things. You are a good father. You think good thoughts and you do good things. And you have asked told me. You said all I need is to just believe. Believe that God sent you. Believe that you are, being, you are, you are empowered with the Holy Spirit. You went about doing good. Healing them that were oppressed. Because God is with you. And you have a name. You said at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Sickness, you bow. Call it by its name. Call it by its name. Diabetes, you bow to the name of Jesus. Tuberculosis, you bow to the name of Jesus. you bow to the name of Jesus. Never disorder, you bow to the name of Jesus. You bow to the name of Jesus. The Bible says in John 14 verse 6, and these signs shall follow them that believe. I love to read it like this. And these signs shall follow them who that believe in my name. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Do you believe in the name of Jesus? Do you believe in the name of Jesus? He says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Eliga don sapron de li ad de boko doro boshi la dante. E ne kila gonga gon su supregedente le baranan de riata. Le don si kala bata le don se te li ad la bosha. Someone 
you have a pain in your side i don't know whether it's the right side or the left side i just saw it pain in the side in the name above all names in the name above all names i command that pain to go in the name of jesus the bible says and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name we come against you in the name of jesus we command you to go right now in the name of jesus I want you to touch anywhere that hurts you. Thank you for welcoming me. Keep it to your band door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. I can call you out, but I want you to do it because you also believe in his name. Begin to exercise your faith. He says, These signs, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Lay your hands on it and begin to declare it. In the name of Jesus, you call the sickness, call the disease, call the symptom, command it to go, you headache, you backache, you kidney to- st- gallstones, whatever it is, call it by its name, and deploy the name of Jesus over it. Because the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Because God has highly exalted the name of Jesus far above every other name. It is in the 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 name. And we believe in that name. We believe in that name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. We exalt 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 the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I see someone with it looks like migraine on one side of the head on one side of the head on one side of the head put your hands on that part whether you are online or on site God is no respecter of time and distances we have seen that already we have proven it in the Bible the Syrophoenician woman Jairus' father the centurion, the man who brought his son, who was demon possessed. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. Put your hands on where that pain is. I command you, foul spirit, holding that headache. I'm causing that headache. I command you to lose your hold right now. In the name of Jesus. I command you to lose your hold. In the name of Jesus. I command you to lose your hold. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, there is joy in our hearts. Because wherever you go, you spread joy. You spread deliverance and freedom. Thank you, Father. 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 We give you praise and we give you glory for that which you have done in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.